What's up, guys? Um, I kind of figured uh, I would get off my lazy ass and make a Pokemon video and uh, kind of get myself ready for Massachusetts Regional so I can uh, do pretty well there because I'm sick and tired of going 5-3. and three. And I was just at a tournament this past weekend with a couple of my buddies. And uh, I went... Um, well, you know what? Let me let me leave that for for the, the last video because uh, I actually did fairly well uh, at this tournament, and uh, I was I was literally going into the tournament, and uh, I said, "Fuck it, YOLO." Um, I'm going to have fun today. I'm bringing a Parish Trap team just to mess with people, and uh, I did fairly well with it. And I mean, you know, spoilers. If I would have won the last battle of this, uh, the last round of this tournament, I would have made top cut, and um, I was kind of upset over that. Um, so yeah, again, spoilers, I didn't win that battle, um, but it was a really close battle, and majority of the battles that I did, barring one in this battle that I lost, were all very close battles that I could have easily won if I played my cards right, but I think I was kind of overwhelmed at the point, uh, at the time, because I was like, ah, I'm doing actually pretty good in this tournament, and my, my last round, I was like, holy shit, if I win this, I could top cut. And uh, I was kind of, uh, I guess, overwhelmed by nervousness at that point because uh, I originally went into the tournament saying, oh, I just want to have fun. You know, I, I, I don't plan on making top cut. I, I, like, I was like, okay, let me win one game with this team. Like, uh, that would have been pretty funny. And I did really, really good. And I think the nervousness took over at that point because I was like, shit, I could actually do well. Um, so... Uh, I, 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 it was, what is it that, it was, uh, the Bluebell, uh, um, Bluebell PA, uh, mid-season showdown, it was like 37 masters there, and, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying not to have a long introduction here, and, I'm um, having a long introduction here, uh, but, uh, my first round battle, and there was a, six rounds, you know, six rounds, um, and my, uh, first round battle was against, uh, Tom, uh, Hoggy, I believe his, his name is, uh, you know, both obviously 0-0 zero, zero at this point, and he had a team of Groudon, Kyogre, Salamance, Eggaslash, Rotom, Heat, and Kangaskhan. Uh, now, his team was fairly, you know, um, simple, other than the Rotom Heat, and I don't know what he was running that for. He didn't bring it to this battle, obviously, as you see here. He brought the, uh, uh, he brought the Dual Primal, and, uh, he ended up bringing the, uh, Kangaskhan and the Aegislash, so I'm gonna go ahead and start this battle up. This is kind of, like, the first time I've ever done one of these, where I'm just, like, you know, recording as I go along here and, uh, commentating, and I'll probably be pausing it as I go through. I do apologize if the video is a bit, a little laggy, or, like, the frame rate is really low because I'm running two screens trying to record, um... My screen, um, this is the first time I'm doing this, so I mean, take it easy on me. Anyway, he's going to lead the Kangaskhan and the Aegislash. It was a really good lead on his part, considering the fact that the only mega option I have on my team is the Gengar. So, I mean, that's kind of an obvious lead for me, right? Like, I'm going to re-lead the Gengar, and, um... I don't know whether or not it's obvious from my team composition as to, you know, if I'm running, like, a Paris Trap team, maybe he's actually pretty, uh, you know, um, conscious when he's watching, you know... BGC content on YouTube, uh, I never heard of his name before, so I don't know whether or not he's actually viable in the format or good in format. He could very well be. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not tooting my own horn here. Um, but uh, I don't know whether or not he's seen Wolfie's videos, and this is kind of like a Wolfie team. Um, and it's a Parish Trap team, so, I mean, he kind of was like, ah, you know, let me lead these two. I'm trying to, you know, get rid of this Gengar right here. Probably doesn't have uh, Shadow Bolton, which I do not. I had no way of hitting the Aegislash, so I was like, ah, shit, and the Aegislash can actually uh, switch out because it is a ghost type, and I can't trap the ghost types in. But I love it was a Kangaskhan, and I was like, ah, what the hell is he going to do with this Kangaskhan right here? It's like, none of them run Scrappy anymore, so I'm like, ah, I'm just going to go ahead and, uh, uh, I, I think what I do is I protect my uh, Landers right here because the, the, the fake out on the Landers was obvious, especially if it was inner focus, and I was like, oh, okay, it didn't Mega Evolved, it's, you know, probably going for, an, like, a fake out into the Kangaskhan. Um, but I was like, oh shit, he's Scrappy. I was like, what? <laughs> I was like, who runs Scrappy Kangaskhan anymore? And he's gonna go for the Shadow Claw of all things into the Gengar. Full physical Aegislash right there, and the Intimidate really mattering. And I couldn't get off, uh, whatever move that I tried to go for right there. I believe it was a Parish Song. I don't know why, because this is, there's a ghost on the field. Anyway, I'm gonna protect, uh, Gengar right here in case he wants to go for a Sucker Punch onto my, um, Gengar. Take it out real quick. And I wanted to go for an Earthquake as well. Uh, I do show that I am not, uh, uh, Bandit or choice. And I go ahead and go for an Earthquake. I don't know what he was anticipating for my Landers to do right there. Uh, because he stays in uh, Blade Form. And I think I also protected my Gengar in case he wanted to go for a Shadow Sneak to get a good KO on my, um, my Gengar right there. But I mean, I, I do get rid of the Aegislash. So uh, we I trade a lot of HP for the KO right there as well as some Life Orb recoil damage. He's going to bring his Kyogre. And um, as you see there... 
I was like, hmm. I was like, that's really interesting. You don't have Rayquaza on your team, and it's a choice scarfed Kyogre. Now, that's what I thought originally. I was like, okay, it's a choice scarf Kyogre. So let me bring in my uh, Groudon right here, because he's most likely going for a water type attack. Uh, Origin Pulse, Water Spout. Try to go for the uh, easy KO on both my Gengar and my Landorus, because it'll outspeed both of them with the choice scarf. And. I'm going to go ahead and get my son up right here and block out any type of uh, water type move. A good move on his part would have been going for an Ice Beam on my Landers. That's why I protected that also. And uh, he's not going to do that. He's going to go for an Origin Pulse, and he's going to go for a Power Up Punch into my uh, Landers, trying to get back to plus one with this Kangaskhan. So I, I, I kind of get fancy right here, and I don't know what I was doing, honestly. Um, I wanted to go for an Explode, and I kind of figured, um, because at the, at, at the point in the last turn, they, I was like, okay, um, he's not Choice Scarfed, which is kind of weird. I don't know what kind of Kyogre this is. So I was like, ah, an Explosion will probably take it out, right? Nope, I was, I, I was wrong. And uh, I think I don't, th I don't think I was paying too much attention right there. I think he's, I, I was like, okay, he's probably Choice Scarfed. So he'll go for the Origin Pulse again, or switch the uh, Kyogre out, so that's why I went for an Explosion Switch to my Gengar. But he just goes for the Ice Beam right there, and I lose both my Pokemon. Um, but I do get rid of his Kangaskhan, the Aegislash is already down, and the Kyogre is uh, basically in um, you know KO range from a fi even a Fire Punch. And uh, it was still risky because I was 2v2 right here. Uh, at this point in the battle, I knew he was not Choice Scarf, so I was uh, you know 100% uh, of the time able to outspeed is uh, Kyogre with my Groudon. Uh, the reason why this is a bit uh, a bit risky right here is because uh, all he had to do is really just like Ice Beam. Get a miss with my, my I get a miss with my Precipice Blades. He gets off an Ice Beam into my Groudon, and his Groudon goes for a Precipice Blades and potentially takes me out. But uh, I don't want to do that. Um, and I go for the safe fake out into the Groudon. It's really the only threat on the field right now because all the Kyogre can do is really Ice Beam. And uh, he's going to go for my Smeargle right there, which is perfect, because uh, he's not going to break the sub. I'm going to have the sub up, so now all I have to do is Precipice Blades and Spiky Shield, so I can uh, preserve that spread damage with the Precipice Blades. Um, and then uh, I'm going to do a lot of damage to the Groudon, and if I connect with Kyogre, I'm going to take it out. I do connect with the Kyogre, fortunately enough. I do a lot of damage to the Groudon. Uh, most likely a speedier variant. Don't believe he had any type of speed control in his team besides maybe the Salamance. Um, and he's going to go for in his own press of his blades. And, uh, uh, you know, I don't know whether or not we were speed tying right there. Um, and I'm not even paying attention right now as to whether or not he went for a move first when I went for a substitute after I went for the fake out. Uh, it's something you always would need to pay attention to in tournaments, especially while you're playing the game. And I was like, okay, the only thing he can hit me with is a press of his blades. Now, I know he's physical, so I'm going to go for a wide guard, block out his press of his blades, uh, and I'm going to go for my own press of his blades. Another reason why I wanted to go for the substitute, so I can absorb that press of his blades or the earth power if he did go for that, and then figure out whether or not he was physical or special. And then if he was physical, I could just easily go for the, uh, for the wide guard right there. Anyway... That's it for uh, this video, guys. Uh, I really, really uh, appreciate the fact that anyone that did watch this video, and uh, I'm going to be doing a uh, round-by-round -round analysis of each one of these uh, 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 games here uh, at the Blue Bell Mid-Season Showdown. Uh, and some of the games are very eventful. I would have to say all the games are very eventful, uh, barring maybe this one. It's, you know, it's not, not very eventful, I mean... It didn't win it easily. Um, he had a lot of trick ups up, tricks up his sleeve. Uh, with the Scrappy Kangaskhan, and if it was a best of three, I definitely wouldn't have fell for that. It was a best of one tournament in Swiss. Uh, but the next uh, round, I actually played Chris Danzo. Chris Danzo um, is a very good uh, battler, and uh, you'll see what I mean by that in the next video. Anyway, guys, I'll, uh, I'll catch you later, and uh, I'm going to do some more Pokemon videos and stuff like that. Anyway, peace.